Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Trust your weekend is going fine. Mine has been fine, filled with birthdays to celebrate from my loved ones. It's been an amazing weekend. <laughs> okay, so uh, market overview trade idea call, 19th November 2023. As you can see on my chart, this is the dollar index. Uh, as you can see on my screen, this is the dollar index charts and dollar really moved last week, right? So, I mean, I explained to you guys, we had this cipher, I think so, a Munich pattern uh, that gave the sell down and the DXY has been going all the way to the downside. I mean, on, on this is Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday. On Tuesday, we had a really big, really, really big push to the downside. I just want to be sure again, this is Friday, this is Thursday, this is Wednesday, and this is Tuesday. So on Tuesday, we had a very, very big push to the downside. So the dollar index really exploded to the downside and that made EU and other currency pairs that has the dollar to really, really move. Okay, so first thing first, uh, let us check the Forex factory and look at what we have, what are the major economic uh, activities we have for this week. So on Monday, that's tomorrow, 19.45. In the evening, we have GBP major news. And then on Tuesday, we have Australian dollar news and we have AUD news and, and then card news by 14.30, card CP high, that's consumer price index for the Canadian dollar. So that's a major news on Tuesday. And then on our Tuesday evening, we have FOMC minute meeting. Wednesday, our AUD major news, USD and card. And then on Thursday, we have the Euro major news, Euro and pound. On Friday, we have Euro, and then we have UST. So we have quite uh, major news for, so the one I'm really gonna be focused on is this CP high for CAD, because CP high is a major news and price usually moves a lot during CP high's new, uh, CP high new release, news release rather. So last week we had CP high on Tuesday for, um, for the dollar index, right? Can you see on Tuesday we had, USD CP high, and that really gave us the big push uh, to the downside, as you can see. So uh, I'm gonna be looking out. Let me see, slow up. So on Tuesday, we have CAD CP high major news. So keep an eye on that. Yes, yes. So, uh, okay, now DXY on the, on the monthly time frame. I remember the last two analysis, that's the last two weeks, the last two analysis, I did the video market overview, the last one and the one before that one, right? Uh, I talked about the dollar index potentially rejecting from this imbalance, or if you know if you want to get a discount entry for the buy on the monthly time frame, the monthly structure is bullish, as you can see, the low, the high, the low, the high, and then it broke the structure. Yeah. So on the monthly time frame, we do have this uh break of structure too upside and I remember drawing the FIB from the swing low to the swing high and I was like okay if we want to get the discount entry it means we need to see price come all the way down to below the 50 percent and I mean two weeks has passed now and dollar index is actually dropping so what is most likely going to happen for DXY this week uh, I mean I would love to see it touch the 50 that's equilibrium of the whole entire range from this down to this up. So I'm still gonna be a little bit positive that the XY is gonna come to the downside more, right? At least get to the 50 to 600 areas, right? And then we can start to look for a possible higher pricing from there. So for the XY, I'm still uh, bearish. And then on the, on the monthly short time, monthly is bullish. Okay, but I just wanna see it come down this week, a little bit more push to the downside, come back into this demand supply area, and we're gonna see what's gonna happen from there. But in terms of the structure, I mean, we can see after we broke the structure here, and you know, I was actually anticipating higher pricing. I remember I was anticipating higher pricing into this area, 
but then you know i had to change my bias since i was wrong the dollar index didn't go up and started to come down i mean what do we do we don't control the markets the best we can do is change our bias and just flow with what the market is, is presenting to us so it started to come down and i saw this money pattern came down and uh we took a good buy on eu all the way to the upside take out the equal highs like i anticipated i told you last week that eu should buy up dxy should come down and i said you know dxy was inside this daily imbalance and we can see how it failed to really go above right and then price just dumped real hard okay now for eu this is what we have for eu so on eu uh, i remember if you remember last week recording i told you i had two entries on eu and they both took me out at break even uh yes that was what happened but if i had not closed out on this trade this would have actually been like a very big win for me right but then i remember closing out because price kept playing around my entry so i had my stop loss at break even and that took me out but then i was fortunate and lucky to actually have this trade uh for last week so i took this trade and i did not really trade it all the way to this high i was just anticipating price to come into this daily imbalance remember i marked out this imbalance for you last week also so i wanted price to buy all the way up there and i was anticipating cp high right we have cp high was about to drop and then i was like okay price would most likely go to the upside so i had my limit set way before the news and uh, this was what happened but i just came down came into the end uh, my entry picked me feel the hand balance came into this institutional mitigation uh institutional cube and then all the way to the upside so that was like a one to eight but uh, i think my was around somewhere yet yeah, a one to five or six yeah That's it, and price is going all the way to the upside. So now these two trades, uh, I got in on this one. This one I'm not in. It took me out at break even. So the daily liquidity, the one we were anticipating now, has been captured, and I didn't know price was really going to go this far. I was just looking at price coming into this imbalance. But now, what do we have? Now I can see we still have this another equal highs up here, right? So, and like I said, I still want to see the dollar index go down to get to at least the equilibrium of the monthly range, right? We equilibrium 50%. So it is not there yet. And I'm going to be anticipating be on the lookout that DXY should go down to that area. And now EU also has its equal highs liquidity. Same with uh, NZDUSD, right? NZDUSD also had the liquidity. So we took price, or let me say high took price. I don't know if you were able to catch the buy up if you actually did made profits from the trade uh made profit last week from eu just drop in the comment section let me know if you actually were stalking it right <laughs> so yeah so now eu is up here i'm still going to be anticipating higher pricing okay because i want dollar index to come down to equilibrium okay yes so that's for eu i'm still bullish i don't have any positions in now all my positions are closed on EU, took profit out, and that's it. I'm not in. I'm just going to be waiting for a new, you know, uh, opportunity to get in. So I have a directional bias now. I'm going to wait going into the week, lower time frame, look for the opportunities to present itself, and then I'm going to get in and then take price all the way to the upside if that's going to be uh, the play for the week. All right. So EU, I am still bullish. Dollar index, I want it to come down to. Uh, the premium uh, come down to discounts equilibrium and then a little bit down and then maybe we can start to go up from there so dollar index bearish eu bullish all right and then also you can see we have this uh in balance here now i want you to look at this when eu created this liquidity here you can see this equal highs this one here and this one what happened so it didn't take it out immediately instead it created the liquidity completed the condition for an imbalance to be formed, then came down, spent a couple of days here. Institutions were accumulating, right? They accumulated. Okay, this, this is a demand supply area. So we had previous resistance in this. I mean, I, I told you guys, I was looking at inside this imbalance, take a buy on EU to go to the upside because of the liquidity, 
the imbalance and what structure prices are is at a um, at a strong demand area right that was previous resistance and now demand and if we go all the way to the back you can also see that this level served as a demand for price in the past so study of past price action to determine what's going to happen in the future as technical analysis for you right so uh yes so for eu now in as much as i'm bullish if it doesn't happen immediately i will not be surprised okay because i can see now we do have another imbalance here so what's going to be the play are they going to repeat what the DDA creates the liquidity come down into the imbalance accumulate and go up is that going to be the play or they're just going to take it out immediately i'm going to be open to see what's going to happen and going into the week i'm going to be monitoring euro dollar i'm going to be checking it have it on my radar to understand what the candles are going to be telling me as the week unfolds right but for eu and bullish but it doesn't have to happen immediately okay get that just like when i was bullish here spent some couple of days going down for the big move up so what's going to be the play here i'm going to be very open and interested to see what's going to happen there but overall i am bullish that's for eu Okay, so this is the liquidity here. Let me put it here. So we have the daily highs. This is the same as liquidity for me. All right. So that's for dollar index and euro. Then the next we have is the GBP AUD. Now, GBP AUD, I remember this trade. I remember this trade. So in the last two weeks, the analysis I made, I said I wanted euro. Um, um, GBP AUD to sell to the downside. And if you remember the recording, I said I wanted to see price drop from this imbalance, right? This imbalance. But then it's okay to be wrong. Okay, the institutions were not ready to go down from there. They were not ready to take out the liquidity. Instead, they rallied price all the way beyond where I was looking at price coming down from. And that's fine. Right? And besides, there was not even lower time frame entry for me. So there was no play. There. And then price went all the way to the upside, and now it's beginning to come down. Now, in terms of the structure, we can see that we look at the structure from here, we do have this high and we have this low, and we have this high and we have this low, and then we have this high. And then price broke the structure and it came all the way down here, and then this area. So I'm, I'm believing that this high has been set. Okay, I, I want to believe that we have the lower high that is going to engineer price to continue to go down until this liquidity has been taken out. That's it. That's what I want to believe. And the candles are telling me so. And then going into the week, if we can eventually close below this area, perfect. Then that's more possibility that price is most likely going to take out the liquidity down here. Right, so I actually have an entry on, on the one hour time frame, two hours rather, let me show you, because I was monitoring this, right? Once I have an asset on my radar, what are the things I look out for in order for me to put a particular asset on my radar? Number one, when I open up the chart, I go to the higher time frame. My analysis will always be on the higher time frame. I am not going to open up my chart and I'm straight to the 15 minutes what is happening. No, I don't do that. That's not how I trade. Others may do it and may be profitable with it. I mean, we all have different strategies. We all have different approach and we look at the market differently. That is why I'm not going to ever criticize somebody else's uh, strategy. Because if the person has been using the strategy for a couple of years and has been working, then who am I to say this bullshit? No, I'm not going to do that. Okay. Market is so big, the market is so large that if you understand what I'm about to say, whatever strategy you want to come out with in the market, like whatever strategy, I'm saying it again, whatever strategy you want to come out and say, this is it. The market will give you some instances where that strategy is actually going to work. That is why we have so many, so many strategies out there. And then when they back test it for you and they show you, it will actually work. You will see it working areas where it has worked in the past. That's it. Anything you want to say to the market, this is my strategy. This is what I've come up with. You will see 
uh, instances where that strategy has actually worked. Okay, so as long as a strategy is not giving you 100% strike rates, consecutive, like consistently 100%, 100% win rates every time, then you do not have any right to criticize another person's strategy. As long as your strategy is too subject to loss, come on, you don't have any right to talk about somebody else trying to say this is, this is not working. <laughs> okay, that's it. So at this, I won't call this a strategy. It's just, I just see that this is how the market works. Okay, it goes from one liquidity to another. And big shout out to my mentor, John Feeb, right? And some other top traders in IM Academy that explained these concepts to me, right? It is a game of liquidity, right? So I see the liquidity when I open up my chart on bigger time frame. Then the liquidity is going to. When I see the liquidity on the daily time frame, then I start to plan my trade around that liquidity because I know the institutions most most likely will come for the liquidity. It doesn't have to happen immediately, but I know they will come for it eventually, right? Now I'm not going to be surprised if this starts to sell. And eventually, over time in the future, we finally take out this low. This is not the first time. This is not the second time. This is not the tenth time I've seen it happen. Okay, and if it doesn't, and it just continues to go up, fine, so be it. They're not ready for the liquidity yet. But I know sometime in the future, they will eventually come for it. Okay, and it's cases like this, that's why we take losses. Or that's why I take losses. Right. When the institutions are not ready to come for the liquidity and then I'm in on the trade anticipating that the lows are going to be taken out. It doesn't have to be on a daily time frame. It can be on the 15 minutes, can be on five minutes, can be on one hour, but I'm anticipating the liquidity to be taken out and then price doesn't take it out and then price rejects. Institutions were not ready. I was wrong. It's okay to be wrong because I have a very solid, very, very solid risk management principle. So I, I don't care the losses I take. I'm a good trader and I will recover the money back. That's, that's, that's a guarantee. I don't fidget. I'm not taking a loss and, and now I, I take a loss and then I'm panicking or scared. And then the next trade, I want to make all the losses back and I just put a big risk into the market. No, my trades are always, always detailed, arranged and uh, I follow my principle. Let me just put it that way. So this is the amount of money I'm risking. That's it. If I take a loss, I take another loss, it's still going to be the same amount of money because I know what I'm targeting. All right. So, too much talk. <laughs> All right. So, uh, let's get back to business. Okay. So, for GBP AUD, like I said, I'm anticipating lower pricing and in this area, this was where I wanted to sell first, but uh, I didn't get that. So price came all the way to the upside, rejected off, I think it was a four hour imbalance up here. So, and then price came all the way to the downside. So what I'm saying is now, if we go to the four hour time frame, okay. Now on the four hour time frame, look at this. No, this was actually a one hour. Price rejected from the one hour imbalance, I'm sure. Or was it a two hours now? So yes, there was a two high imbalance up here. I saw price rejected from, and look at price just dumped. Now on the two hour time frame, I can see that we now have a structure shift to the downside, right? Price was coming in a bullish trend, like high, low, high, low, high, low, high, low. And then we had this big push to the downside. Look at the response of the imbalance. Now we have what a breaker structure. So this is my range high, and this is my range low. And now price started to go up, came down, and now price came all the way up here. I had my, uh, I was already anticipating this, but then let me show you, uh, I'm coming. This is GBP AUD coming. Yeah, GBP AUD, this is it. All right, so you see GBP AUD, uh, too hard time frame, right? And that's it. <laughs> I saw it. What happened, right? So the, the situation with this was when I did this analysis, while I was doing it, price was already inside the imbalance. And then price started to reject. As you can see, we had a big rejection to the downside. Yeah. 
And I was like, okay, I'm going to get in again. Just have the limit. Maybe price is going to come back up. <laughs> and then look at price came up. And if you see this now, this was so close to stop loss already. Came really, really close to stop loss here. But then I'm using Pepperstone to take my trade. So it doesn't hit here. Then it doesn't hit on my Pepperstone account. Was, but it was so, so close. I remember I was looking at this trade. Like, okay, all right. One loss. <laughs> Okay. But then I started to see the rejection. I just wanted to see how was the two hour candle going to close? Is it going to close back into the in, back inside this imbalance area or price is just going to go up? And then came all the way up here and I was like, that's it. That's it. It's done. And as you can see here, the smallest with the lowest lot size possible, this is going to be a $3 risk. Lowest lot size, $3 risk. And I was aiming for about, you know, see, I mean, for the lowest lot size also, you're going to have $24 profits. That's it. For the small account using the lowest lot size, that's this is what's going to give you a $3 risk, $24 profit. Now, if you're risking more than that, you know how to multiply it and what would be your risk and what would be your target. But look at this trade, right? Price. I saw that it closed, the two hour candle closed inside this imbalance and then Next to our candle, and then next to our candle, and then we had a new day. Right, came down here, and then price went all the way back up. But then I was uh, probably asleep then, and just wake up and see, okay, price dumped all the way to the downside. So for this trade now, I'm at break even. Okay, I'm at break even because I think I still got in heli. So, and I saw I don't want to experience all of this again. I was already out of drawdown, came back and drawdown. Now in profit, break even. In case it just comes back up there again, let it just take me out at break even. I don't want to experience a little bit below break even to cover for swap fee. And <laughs> but then uh that's it. So I'm at break even here. I'm believing that this is going to go down to our structure is bearish. And I think I mean if we continue to see lower pricing, I will be really excited about this. But then if it goes up, uh <laughs> that means it's not ready yet. Right? And then we look for another trading opportunity to present itself and then we get in right simple stuff entry was based off what demand supply and then we have the break of structure the imbalance buying at premium cool trade to measure the uh fee using the fee from the swing high to the swing low as you can see the entry was at 50 percent above so that's a premium entry for me and that's cool right exactly and i was thinking Another reason why I went break even on this trade is because I'm I'm thinking that if we have this and we have this down here and price rejected from the 618, now you know I'm an I can I can be an ammonic trader if the opportunity presents itself. But from what I'm seeing now, if we had to go by ammonics now from this X all the way to this A, and then we have a 618, and then price comes down here where it is. Ammonic pattern is telling us that price is going to reject at 786. 786, 886 area. Price is most likely going to reject from there. That's going to give us a godly or bad ammonic pattern. Either of those two is most likely going to form if this is going to be an ammonic pattern trade. And whichever one is going to be, definitely is going to hit SL if it's coming back up. That's why I just went break even because, okay. You know, I'm looking at all the possibilities. Like, okay, if there's going to be an ammonic pattern, definitely that's going to be a losing trade for me. So break even, which I don't want it to be, but I don't control the market, right? <laughs> Just all I can do, what I have control over is my capital. And I'm going to preserve that very, very well, right? I do not control the outcome. That's left to the market. <laughs> okay, so that's it. But then if that's going to be the case, then uh, keep an eye on GBP AUD. I'm bearish on this asset. I want it to go to the downside, which I don't want it to come back to Henry though. <laughs> All right, so that's for GBP AUD, I'm bearish. And then for Euro Chef, Euro Chef, uh, amazing trade. You guys remember Euro Chef, right? We've been looking at this. We want this to come down. All the way to this weekly liquidity. Yeah, this is a big move if that's gonna happen, right? <laughs> so, and then price is way, way up at premium. And I'm just still on my radar. I'm checking what's going to happen. I remember I told you last week that Eurochef, because of the four-hour liquidity 
and one hour liquidity that most likely this asset is going to go up and that was what happened right so and we have this daily imbalance here which i would want price to get to that's going to give me a peace of mind to even look for sales okay looking for sales around this area is still going to be a little bit high on <laughs> like suspicion is going to still be high that it might not hold but i would love it if we can come here this has taken out all the highs really premium and then we can sell down from there so i'm still going to be looking at this area but then i'm also looking at what is happening in this area right i don't have an entry i'm just looking right we have this equal lows now price came all the way up into this imbalance and dropped and then it's now back there again so What's most likely going to be the play? Is it going to reject from this imbalance or it's going to come all the way up here? But the one I'm going to be okay calling out or giving out to you guys is I'm going to wait. I want us to wait for it to come all the way up here. All right, let's, let's see. I mean, let's, let's be patient if it's going to get there. All right, as long as they have not closed below this low, yeah, this is still semi-bullish. All right, so let's see what's going to happen. If it's going to get hard way up here, this would be a perfect place to look for sales. So that's for Eurochef. And then for UK Undred, how many of you remember this? Remember I told you guys that this asset has daily liquidity and we, have, we marked out two imbalances. You remember the first imbalance here and the second one. And then on the recording, I told you that this imbalance, the first one down here, price has played it already, came down and then now price is Price went all the way back again to the upside. Now, have we got into a uh, premium? Let's check. So from the swing high all the way to the swing low. And see, price came to the premium and then came down. And now we even have a more premium entry at the 618 inside the imbalance now. So this is making sense. I know UK 100 is still most likely going to drop. But because of this liquidity I'm seeing here, just looking so good. I know NASDAQ now is... Uh, the last I checked, it was already close to you know, <laughs> very high. So, I mean, it was, as it took out the high, we're going to check that. Okay, let's check. Let's come to uh, indices. Come to NASDAQ. You can see NASDAQ actually has crossed. Uh, I think this is a hot time high. Let me check monthly time frame. Okay, no, still have a hot time high up, up up here at uh, close to 17K areas. So, What's going to happen for NASDAQ? Let's see. Right. So coming back to UK 100. Uh, I'm, still, I'm just looking, right? I'm just observing the market. What's going to happen? Okay. And then it's now it's inside the imbalance. We had Thursday. It came Wednesday came into the imbalance. Thursday, we had a down day. And Friday went all the way back to the upside. And then on the four hours, this is what we have. Yeah, right. Took out this liquidity and then went all the way to the upside. Now, I was actually trading this NASDAQ. I had an entry on the 30 minutes. Okay, I had an entry on the 30 minutes, but I went break even immediately after I came back in profit because of this. So I was actually looking to take this. I took a sell from here, just in balance. I think my entry was around this area. Right, somewhere here, and my stop loss was in this area, just at this high. Now I have seen the liquidity already. As a then, it was this equal highs here, so I knew, okay, this is this is bad. Like they might want to come for this liquidity, and because of this imbalance that is just resting above this high in this area. So I kind of knew that this might be an early entry, and I had my entry there. Regardless, I mean, just a certain amount I'm risking. And EU gave quite a number of RRR, so. And AU the USD also give quite a number of RRR. So it's okay putting a certain percentage back into the market. See, I mean, it's all based on probability, right? The right, I mean, a high level probability. It's not just random probability, like I can win, I can lose. You have to really determine what is going to happen. But just in case it doesn't go your way, you have risk management in place, right? So the entry was here, came out the way up, and then as immediately came back down to profit. I just closed it straight. Because I knew now that price is giving us these three pool highs, definitely it's going to go back up. And that was what happened. I was smart enough to know when to exit the market. <laughs> that would happen. And yeah, so now we are back up in this area. I'm just skeptical. I don't know if that area is going to hold. 
and price is going to start dropping are uh, just going to go up. So for now, I'm still not clear as to what UK100 want to do. So I'm just going to be looking at it, right? But I'm still confident that the price is going to go down until price does something else. So for AUDUSD, this one, do we have a trade idea on this? Nope. Oh, uh, yes. So for AU, I remember I was late to the party. <laughs> AU, we wanted to buy AU. Those of you that have been following me, those of you that have been following me, uh, we wanted to buy AU to take out this equal highs and then price came all the way down here. And then we had what price rejected from this institutional cube. And that was a big push of about, I was 200 pip to the upside. So I didn't catch this entry, I was late. But then I was still able to join, right? I was still able to join the, uh, the, in as much as I missed out on all of this though, but I still joined price institution to take out the daily liquidity. So this was my entry year. I think it was on the 15 minutes time frame or so. Yeah, 15 minutes time frame. I was buying AU and boom, right? This was my entry at this imbalance here. It's a nine pip stop loss and then all the way to the upside, uh, 27 pip. There's no need going above one to three because Minimum trade for me is one to three. I'm not going to be putting my TP hat anywhere, somewhere around here. I mean, it's good. Some people do it, but I, I mean, I follow my own principle, right? I don't give, I don't care about what any other person does. I follow my own principle. So one to three, a little bit above the TP. And I remember I was having a private call with a student on this day. And I told him that I'm a little bit worried because this could potentially take out the high not even get one to three and then drop. But immediately price was up here. I went break even already. So price came all the way up to one to three. Boom. And that was it. I was out before this big move to the downside. This was news. I'm definitely sure of this big move to the downside. So for AU now, what am I anticipating? Uh, I mean, the major thing, the major thing is the liquidity and that has been taken out. So for AU now, it's not going to be on my radar for this week. I am completely done with AU until next time. Now, USDJPY failed to take out the high. I mean, that was expected, right? If EU buys, UJ most likely comes down. Right. And then, so for UJ, uh, I mean, that was a, it was a, it gave us quite a nice bullish run following structure. High, low, higher high, higher low, and then this high. And it came all the way down here. So now I'm even more. I'm going to be looking at this liquidity down here now as possible target. All right, let me see. Did this actually go above? So yes, closed above. So in terms of structure now, this is the higher low and this is the higher high. So market is still bullish, but we have this liquidity. Yeah, so I'm just going to be hoping to see if dollar is going to go down, the more most likely UJ will go down also. All right, so for UJ, I'm bearish because of the liquidity down and market is still bullish though. Yeah. So for AUD chef, AUD chef, AUD chef. Oh yeah. I remember taking a trade on AUD chef also. This is Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Mondays. Oh yeah, this was last week trade rather. So for AUD chef, I want to see this go down. As you can see, we didn't really have uh, too much of price movement uh, this week, right? Price Monday was here, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it came up and then came back down again. So for a uh, for ADHF, I'm still believing it's going to come down, but I don't know how fast yet. So I'm just going to be on the lookout for what is going to happen going into the week. We can start to see maybe candles go lower, then that's going to make sense, right? We know we wait for pullback and then we join price to the downside. So that's for ADHF. I am a bearish on AUD chef and then Euro AUD. Euro AUD now we have this liquidity year and we have this liquidity year. So I, I mean it is closer to this liquidity up here than this one. So I'm going to be looking at a possible bullish price action to uh, take up this high, right? And if Euro is gonna go up, uh Euro AUD most likely will go up also. So I'm just gonna be on I'm gonna be open to see what's gonna happen, right? And then if it starts to like see price starts to trade higher then most likely this liquidity 
will be the play for uh, Euro AUD. And then USD NOC, this one's, I'm just watching what's gonna happen. We've been looking at this now for like three weeks. You know, we had this daily high, they didn't take it out. Now we have daily lows. So I think they're gonna take out this one. Okay, this is looking interesting. And then USD SEC dumped, right? Got this daily lows and big day, right? Took it out. So what's gonna happen? Just looking at this. And then for NZD USD, which is the last one, uh, we're gonna be heading to our radar now. This I can see this liquidity here, and we have the bullish structure, and we have this high, and price is now inside the imbalance. So I mean, if dollar is gonna go down to the equilibrium, then NZD USD most likely will go up. Right. That was why I wasn't so bothered when EU, I took a buy, that buy I took on EU to take out the liquidity. And then I went to AUD USD and saw that AUD USD has not captured the high. So that presented another opportunity for me the next day after CPI major news on Tuesday. The CPI news on Tuesday, EU took out the liquidity to the, to the upside. AU also bought, but AU was way down. So it couldn't get all the way up to the liquidity. So I would say the institutions kept it for the next day, right? So EU took out the liquidity as a result of the weakness of dollar due to CP high, but AUD US if you were to take out the high, but was close to it already. And then I knew, okay, since that's, if AU is close to it now, then most likely we're gonna take it out. So I was able to get in on another opportunity the next day, that was on Wednesday, take AU to the upside. Now, NU, now you can see also, came into the imbalance, big day to the upside. I was on Tuesday, Wednesday created more liquidity. And then Thursday, Friday, deeper into the imbalance. Now what's gonna be the play? Are they gonna to continue to go up into this daily liquidity or do wanna come and feel the imbalance more? I'm gonna be open to see what's gonna happen on NZD USD. But because of the liquidity, I am bullish. Right, so these are the assets I'm going to be looking at for this week dollar index, euro, GBV, AUD, the euro chef, UK 100, US JPY, AUD chef, euro, AUD, US NOC, US SEC, NZD, USD. You don't have to trade everything. You can see I only took about two trades among everything there, about three or so. Just wait for the, uh, the signature to be present and then let the checklist align and you get in. Right, just getting, you already know how much you want to risk start of the week, what's going to be the maximum profit to be made, it's going to be the maximum loss, and just, you go from there. All right, so this is weekly outlook for this week. If you have any question at all, drop them in the comment section, and when I see them, I will attend to it. So do have an amazing trading week, and I wish you many, many, many profits. <laughs> all right, bye-bye, guys. Take care.